Nazis tried to destroy our family. So I grew up with just a few relatives and many stories as my father sang Hava Nagila to cheer us. Then in 2014, out of the blue, I got an email that changed everything. The Lunenburg Museum had items stolen from my great-great-grandfather, Marcus Heinemann. They were looking for the descendants of his 17 children to return them. I found a whole new family and came face to face with a frightening past. I felt many things about the Holocaust. Seething rage, indescribable sadness, and terrible loss. Yet the purpose for my life has been to work for a world where no one is hated and no one is victimized for their identity. We're still a long way from a vision of acceptance and compassion. Yet this German museum reached out to our family to set things right. And in a unique gesture, our family agreed to loan the items back to the museum. Little did I know that their act and words of apology would mean so much, and our loan would be so transformative. Somebody wrote to the museum saying, I found a list from an auction in 1940 in the house of Marcus Heinemann, and there's one whole page with stuff that the museum or the Museum Association bought in this auction. So they sent it to the museum and said, you should look into this. I started looking around. I mean, I had the, all the names from the family Bible. I did a lot of search uh, on the internet. And then I found your mother's obituary, and it had your name. I remember that you wrote to me and said, yes, this is it. Uh, we have found us, basically. This is it. We are actually the Heinemann family, and uh, you found the right ones. And I was very, very happy. I immediately felt a connection with Anneke. She was a German historian whose passion and deep commitment matched mine. I joined her in the search. We found over 50 descendants from all over the world. I emailed them all, proposing that we loan the items back to the museum. In this way, the items would be safeguarded and accessible to the whole family. We might have loaned them to a Holocaust museum, but I felt strongly that the people of Lüneburg should know Marcus Heinemann and his descendants. He was a leading Jewish citizen in a town where now all Jews were gone. Slowly, I got responses. Not a single person told us not to make the loan. We signed on to a statement and agreed to meet in Lüneburg. Those who could come came to make this symbolic act together for healing in an unforgettable reunion. My name is Ruth Veron and I come from Marburg. Marcus Heinemann was my great, great grandfather. I am Naomi Raz, sometimes called Nomi. And I live in a place, a small town called Levaseretion. Uh, my great grandfather was Salomon Heinemann, who was oh. the brother of Marcus Heinemann. Mm -hmm. A group who has never met from different generations, from different cultures and different languages. One had been in a concentration camp. Another had a mother who had been part of the kinder transport, and many others who descended from those who escaped. I'm Philippe Levy, and I'm living in Boulogne. We wanted to show our sons and daughters that we are a big family and where we come from. Now I feel like I have a whole big family, so it's very wonderful. Our reunion was a walk through history, a time when the Heinemann family struggled beyond the anti-Semitic prejudice to become highly respected leaders. And then the horrible demise that sent the family scattering. And now, once again, renewal in a moment of restitution and reconciliation. It was a time of healing and a chance to connect with each other and with Lüneburg. For two days, the whole town was our window 
into the past. We started searching for Marcus and his brother Solomon's roots. It was not easy for Jews in Lüneburg when Marcus and Solomon were young. Jews paid high special taxes and their father Simon's petition for a business had been rejected. But the family persisted and eventually started a textile business along with the Heinemann Bank that Simon founded in the 1820s. That bank later became part of the Deutsche Bank. Marcus was a leader of the Jewish community. They worshipped in this small room, now an artist's studio. We saw what had been the synagogue in a very small house, and clearly they needed a bigger space to worship. And then the Jewish community built a beautiful synagogue, and the Heinemans donated much of the money for construction. The synagogue that was built was oversized for the size of the Jewish community in Lüneburg, but it clearly was a magnificent building. I wish we knew more about Marcus's life, but what we do know makes me so proud. He was truly a generous human being. Well, he was one of the founding members of the museum. There was a room named after Marcus Heinemann in 1933 that was suppressed, of course. Fortunately, we retake that um, history with naming a hall after Marcus Heinemann now again. We also learned more of the generosity of the Heinemanns, who as members of the Cloth Makers Guild donated a stained glass window to the St. Nicholas Church. It was clearly given to the church by a Heinemann, and that was um, a bit surprising because it was clearly a New Testament figure in the stained glass. That was sort of a heartwarming story that there was that kind of exchange between the, the Christians and the, and the Jews. Sadly, Marcus's wife Henrietta died shortly after Henry the youngest of the 17 children was born. The house that Marcus Heinemann lived in is a very old house from the 16th century. When we go inside, we will see that in the back there are still, still some structures. You can also go upstairs. Yeah, we'll go back in. Yeah, I never thought of it. We're imagining 17 children. <laughs> As the children grew up, they also had homes in Lüneburg. I could picture our grandmother living in that house with five uh, brothers and, and sisters. It was quite emotional to think that our grandmother, at the turn of the century, was raised in that house. Gradually, everything changed for the Heinemanns. Hitler had come to power. The Nazis made life in Lüneburg intolerable for our family and for all Jews. Sadly, we learned each other's tragic stories, the brutal murder of family members and of others who barely managed to escape. Dr. Ruth March shared her mother's story. My mother? Um... Hannah was one of three children. She escaped on the kinder transport to live with an English woman. That was a way families outside Nazi territory could rescue and save the lives of Jewish children. Hannah's siblings were going to join her, but that was not to be. The last that we heard of them was that they boarded a train in Wurzburg and they departed on the train bound for Auschwitz and we have no record of them since that time, but we assumed that they died in Auschwitz. Ruth Verone, and Nomi Rise also shared tragic stories. My father was studying law. He found out that he can't get into the university. He can't, I am not allowed to go on with his studies. Then he decided to go to Palestine. 
when the members of the family weren't allowed to work anymore. My grandfather, being a professor, committed suicide, and two of his sisters were killed by the Nazis. Out of that picture of the big group of 17 children, two of the daughters were murdered by the Nazis, as were 13 of Marcus's descendants. Solomon had two children. His only daughter was also exterminated, along with many other Heinemans. Even their beloved synagogue was destroyed when the Nazis forced the Jewish community to have it torn down. Now only an empty space remains with a small memorial stone. A rabbi came from another town to conduct the memorial. He told us that he does not drive on the Shabbat, the Sabbath, but he made an exception because this was such a special moment. And not only did I drive on Shabbat at all, which for some community members was a strange thing to see, Rabbi, you're driving. So what? This is a special day, um, and I could not decide what to drive. He said we were there to commemorate our family and all who have died when madness reigned the world. We read the names of all those Marcus Heinemann descendants who perished in the Holocaust. And I thought this visit wouldn't have been complete or wouldn't have been really right totally if we didn't um, include something like that to remember the, the people and to mm -hmm. name them. Max Hesse is a Holocaust. Slowly, different members of our family returned. So I am René, René Lévy, and uh, I am very glad that uh, this man mm -hmm. <laughs> did not destroy all the family. Lüneburg was left without any Heinemans and without Jews. If Hitler had his way, none of us would be alive, and the world would never have known our contributions. Seventy years later, we were back. As we created our family tree, I learned that the Heinemann descendants included an astronomer, an oceanographer, authors, educators, artists, doctors, therapists, business people, journalists, and even a famous philosopher, my uncle Fritz Heinemann. We almost lost our beloved Lüneburg, and we almost lost each other. It means so much that Lüneburg has not forgotten us. To someone uh, visiting the studio for this purpose. So. <laughs> All over town, Lüneburgers opened their doors and their houses and invited us into their homes. We want to reveal a memorial plaque in our house. It shall inform everybody about the history we are living in. In their own way, many said that they were sorry for the past and that the Heinemans once again were warmly welcomed in Lüneburg. You, for family generations to come, please always keep in mind our home is also York. We went to City Hall for a welcoming celebration by the Lord Mayor. He spoke of being deeply moved by our generous loan in spite of so much injustice against our family. He told of the great contributions of the Heinemann family to this small city and said, your family has been deeply wronged. I can only say in the name of our town, we are extremely sorry about this black chapter in our history. Can you, you translate what's on here? You've been handing over the um, museum objects of the family. Our visit culminated in the restitution event at the museum, which was why we had come. This was the core of our visit. Together with our German hosts, we could not escape the bitter feelings of the tragic memories mingled with the sweet joy of reunion. The youngest descendants read from our statement. In 2014, the Lüneburg Museum reached out to its heirs, telling us they were once again honoring Marcus Heinemann and his family. They also wanted us to know that the museum had in its collection Heinemann family items that were looted by the Nazis. Although most of us have not yet met one another, 
Those of us who have corresponded agreed to a 10-year loan of these items to the museum. The gesture by the heiress was really what made this whole process possible, which had the side of healing and, uh, and really reconciliation aspect. We are greatly indebted to you, dear members of the Heinemann family, who have most kindly consented to accept our late restitution of those formerly expropriated objects. In saying that I'm happy to talk to you, I nevertheless must admit that I don't feel too comfortable about it. Looking back at those shameful years of our past, during which your ancestors were humiliated, deprived of their property and deported. When we started with this process in the society, of course there were people saying that throws a bad light on our former director. Mm -hmm. But it is so important to say that we have the responsibility for what happened at the time. On behalf of our museum society, I hereby ask your forgiveness. It was an official act to return items that had been taken wrongfully. The Family Bible, um, a beautiful, beautiful book um, created at the end of the late 19th century with beautiful drawings and engravings and annotated with the personal history and milestones of the Marcus Heinemann descendants. And there were also stained glass windows, some of which are very, very old from the 1600s. And they returned them to us. But because there's no other place where they really should be, we loaned them back to the museum um, for 10 years and probably for much, much longer. Um, and that was um, just the right thing to do. And I think I feel really good to be a part of that decision and a part of that act. The weekend moved us deeply. We had a space for reflection and discussion. Different feelings came up, like uh, anger and uh, sadness. When we heard the people of the museum, the people of the state, and the people of the region talking about how they felt and about the whole thing of looting and uh, getting the pieces of work, I felt that it was in the right place. Museums are places of memory and of preservation, but they also have the responsibility to come to terms with the past and to find ways of dealing with the past. These wrongs of the past must be set right. When I heard the people from the museum and the state apologizing, it was so nice for me to see that. I, I feel less the anger. I feel more the, first of all, excitement of, of knowing family all around the world, which we didn't know about, and also very moved by the things different people say, just knowing that I'm in the street that my great, great, great grandfather, I don't know how many greats I need to say here, uh, that he built and it was named after him. It's very moving to know that he was so important in this town and we have something to do with him. And I was very happy to be there. The family of my father was a little bit not clear for me, but now I understand what's happened and from where we come a little bit. This trip has really been quite an amazing um, outpouring of feeling, of sentiment, of, of welcoming, and I really feel this genuine effort to let Jews know that things have changed and people feel differently. That feeling that they said they were sorry, I felt genuinely that they were reaching out to us. I have the same feeling especially among the group who have chosen to be part of the museum's effort. I, I think that's quite amazing. And the fact that we worked out a, an understanding of loaning the items back that, mm -hmm. that had been wrongly taken. I think it's all been uh, done in just a very beautiful way. And, and um, it, I'm glad to be part of it. So am I. Plus just meeting all these family members from all over that I never knew. All of my life I have grown up with knowing that my, my mother's direct family were murdered by the Nazis and that there were only a, a few 
uh, relatives. And then suddenly, through the efforts of the people here in, in Lüneburg, through Becky and through Annika, we come here and we have 40 relatives, brand new relatives from all over the world. And they are such brilliant people. I'm so glad to have met them. It gave me great hope that we reclaimed what was almost lost. In a very unusual way, this weekend brought together the past, the present, and the future. We shared a unique moment and had a glimpse of a future where out of a dark past, we could find ways to create acceptance and inclusion for everyone, everywhere. I finish up with Havana Gila. Some people know it. If you know it, join me with it. But uh, that, it's sort of the Jewish beer barrel polka. <laughs>